Component separation is a technique employed when loss of domain has occurred in the presence of ventral hernia. With component separation, the midline fascia can be closed without tension. The minimally invasive approach uses tunnels to access and separate the external oblique aponeurosis from the underlying internal oblique muscle. This allows preservation of the rectus abdominis perforator vessels that feed the medial skin edges and thereby may reduce wound complications associated with traditional open component separation. The Spacemaker Pro Cylindrical Balloon Access and Dissector System comes in a kit, including 5 mm optical ports, 2 5 mm cannulas, 1 5 mm obturator, hand pump, Spacemaker Pro Cylindrical Balloon, 12 mm cannula obturator, balloon tip trocar with 5 mm reducer. This procedure will require three trocar sites on each side of the abdomen. The Spacemaker Pro Cylindrical Balloon has a unique design that allows the creation of a discrete working space in the potential space between the external oblique and the internal oblique muscles, lateral to the rectus muscles. The cylindrical shape conforms to the potential space between these two muscles. Once the space is created, the external oblique muscle can then be separated from the internal oblique. The external oblique aponeurosis is incised from just above the costal margin to the inguinal ligament to ensure release along the entire abdominal wall. The procedure can be repeated on the patient's contralateral side to assure a tension-free closure of the midline fascia. The patient should be placed in a supine position with their arms out. It is important to prep to the edges of the table laterally, as the lateral trocars will be close to the table. The first incision is made just below the costal margin, over the 11th rib. The incision should be 2 centimeters and should be carried down to the external oblique aponeurosis. The external oblique aponeurosis is identified by noticing the inferior medial direction of the fibers. Incise the external oblique aponeurosis, splitting the fibers in their natural direction. Take care to not penetrate the internal oblique muscle that lies immediately posterior to it. Once incised, the internal oblique aponeurosis can be visualized. Use an S retractor or your finger to bluntly dissect the space around the incision, creating space for the insertion of the 12 mm optical balloon tip trocar. Apply endolube solution to the balloon dissector for easy insertion through the balloon tip trocar. Insert the balloon dissector so that the obturator is pointing toward the anterior superior iliac spine. The insertion should be easy with no impediments. A 10 mm scope can then be inserted. If a 5 mm scope is preferred, use the reducer on the obturator cap. The balloon is then inflated and components separated under direct visualization. The external oblique muscle can be seen superiorly and the internal oblique muscle inferiorly. Once complete, the dissecting balloon is removed and the space is inflated with CO2 to a pressure of 12 millimeters of mercury. Create another incision for a working trocar halfway between the 11th rib and the iliac crest. The incision should be made as far lateral as possible. 
Begin the separation of the external oblique muscle at the junction where the muscle meets tendon, approximately 2 cm lateral to the rectus sheath. Start at the middle and incise the roof of the external oblique aponeurosis inferiorly first, all the way down to the inguinal ligament. Be sure to cut through the membranous scarpa's fascia to gain maximum release. Introduce a second 5 mm trocar just above the anterior superior iliac spine. This will provide better visualization to perform the release superiorly. Continue to release the external oblique muscle up to the level of the xiphoid, just above the inferior costal margin. Superior to the balloon tip trocar, the external oblique aponeurosis becomes more muscular in nature. Energy can be applied here to assure hemostasis. For a bilateral component separation, the procedure is repeated on the patient's other side. Component separation, as demonstrated here, can help surgeons achieve the goal of tension-free midline fascial closure when faced with a ventral hernia and loss of abdominal domain.